So we have already seen the recursion tree method. We have already seen the recursion tree method and the master theorem, right? And the master theorem, right? So the recursion tree method was a graphical method where we would draw the tree itself. Master theorem basically uses a formulaic approach. Substitution method is a third popular approach wherein we use mathematical induction. We use mathematical induction. We use mathematical induction that you must have learned during your high school days in 8th or 9th grades, right? So it's a very simple idea. We'll see how to do it. I'll also tell you typically what are the advantages and disadvantages of the substitution method. We know that recursion tree is a graphical method, very easy to visualize and things like that. Master theorem, if you can remember the cases, master theorem is super powerful. Let's, let's go to the substitution method, right? So let's take an example so that we can better understand it. Suppose we have this problem of the, this recursive relation where tn equals to, let's say, 2tn by 2 plus some cn, right? Let's assume this is a recursive relation. So this is the recursive, uh, this, so this is the recurrence relation that we had for merge sort, if you recall. This is exactly the one that we had for merge sort. So now, one way to solve it is, this, this is the interesting part. Just like in, uh, in mathematical induction, first let's guess an answer. Okay, if you recall mathematical induction, what do we do? First, we guess or we assume an answer is true, right? And then we have a step of uh, we have a set of steps that we follow through. So let's 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 do that here. So first I'll assume or I'll guess. I'll make an informed guess. I'll guess the t of n is order of n log n. I'll make this guess. And what does this mean? This implies that t of n is less than or equal to c n log n. Of course, this c and this c are different. Okay. Just for just for simplicity, let me just erase this C. Okay, same thing. A constant doesn't change much for you here, right? So what we need to prove is that for some C, okay. So what does what does this mean? What does the definition of this mean? This means there exists some C which is greater than zero, such that this is true for all n greater than or equal to n zero. This is the definition of big O, right? Right. So now, now, now let's see, let's see, let's see this, okay? Now we want to prove this. We want to prove that Tn is less than or equal to C n log n, right? Now how do we do it? So first I guess that this is the answer. I'm just making an informed guess. I haven't proved yet, okay? How do I prove? So it, just like in mathematical induction, I'll assume, I'll assume that this equation, that this, that this, whatever I've guessed, I've, so assume that it is true, it is true for m less than n, right? So what, what do we do in mathematical induction? We first assume that, see in mathematical induction, what do we do? We, we first guess or assume something and then we guess, we guess the answer first. We assume it is true for n and we prove that it is true for n plus 1 just using this assumption that it is true for n. Right? This is what we do in mathematical induction, right? Similarly here, what are we doing here? First, we are guessing that t of n is order of n log n. We are assuming that it is true for all m less than n. Okay, for all m less than n. Now, I need to prove, so using this assumption, I need to prove that t of n is less than or equal to c n log n, assuming, assuming, right, t of m is less than or equal to c m log m for all m less than n. This is this this is exactly what I need to prove. This is very very important. This is what I need to prove. This is what is mathematical induction, right? I need to prove. See here, what do we do in mathematical induction? We assume it is true for n, and we try to prove that it is true for n plus one. Or in other words, we assume that it is true for everything one two. It is true up to n n minus one. People must have studied different variations of mathematical induction. We assume that it is true for all of them. And then using this assumption, we need to prove that it is also true for n, whatever we have guessed. Right? So we are guessing that t of n is order of n log n. Now we are assuming that this is true for all m less than n. So what do we need to prove? Let's write that very clearly. We need to prove that t of n is less than or equal to c n log n, 
assuming that t of m is less than or equal to cm log m for all m less than n. Okay, so let's take let so because this because we're already assuming this is true. If m is see for all m less than uh, for all m less than n, we we have assumed this and we need to prove this. That's how that's how mathematical induction works, right? Now if m is equal to n by two because n by two is less than n, right? This should hold, which means t of n by two is less than or equal to c n by two log n by two, right? Because m, if I take if I take if I take m is equal to n by two, since n by two is less than n, because of this assumption, this thing holds. Now what do I need to prove? I need to prove that assuming now, now I need to prove that assuming t of n by two is less than or equal to c n by two log n by two. I need to prove this. Okay, let's see how we'll prove it. Okay, I hope I hope this structuring of the problem as a mathematical induction is clear. This is the important part. First, the hardest part in substitution method is guessing. Once I guess it, I need to write what I need to prove very clearly. Otherwise, we'll mess it up. Okay, so let's go step by step now. What do I need to prove? I need to prove I need to prove that t n is less than or equal to c n log n, assuming t n by two is less than or equal to c n by two log n by two. So now, what is the actual formula for t of n? T of n is two t n by two plus n. This is the formula, right? This is what I, this is the actual recurrence relation that I'm given. Now here I'll replace this. I'll replace this with this term, right? Which means this whole thing is going to be less than or equal to Look, look here, c n by 2, sorry, c n by 2 log n by 2 plus n. So why did I put a less than equal to here? Because this term, this term is greater than this term. Look at this, look at this. This term is greater than this term. So I need to have, I, I also have 2 here, 2 into, right? So t n by 2, look at this, look at this. What do we have? t n by 2 is less than or equal to c n by 2 log n by 2. I just replaced, I just replaced this, I just replaced this with this inequality. That's why it has become less than or equal to. Now when I try to solve it, this 2 and 2 would get cancelled. So what is this equal to? What is this term equal to? c into n into log n by 2 plus n. This is what this is equal to, right? So this term is less than or equal to this term and this term is equal to this term that's why i have written equal to here right now what does this mean this is equal to cn log n minus log 2 plus n because that's that's a definition of right if you have log a by b log a by b is log a minus log b and this is base 2 right log of 2 base 2 equals to 1 because 2 power 1 equals to 2 so this I can replace with one. This I can replace with one. Right? So what does this become? It, this became cn log n minus cn plus n. Right? And remember, this is this is simple, right? This is simple. Now this whole thing is less than or equal to cn log n. Right? Because what do we have here? You have this term right and you have a minus cn plus n right so so this whole thing can be written as minus c minus 1 into n this term this term can be written as this so i'm subtracting something from cn minus log n so cn log n minus c minus 1 into n that's what this is right hence what i've proved here through these inequalities through these logical steps i've proven the tn is less than or equal to cn log n. So the only assumption I have made here is this. And that's what I needed to prove as per mathematical induction. I needed to prove that t of n is less than or equal to cn log n, assuming that t of m is less than or equal to cm log n for all m less than n. I didn't assume for all m less than n, I just assumed for one m, which is n by two. Right? This is the flow. It's very, very easy to make mistakes in this flow. Let me show you an example on how you can mess this up. Okay. 
So let's take the same recurrence relation, right? Suppose let's take the same recurrence relation, Tn equals to, I'll tell you how you can make mistakes here, right? Plus n. This is the recurrence relation. So let's assume I guessed. Let's assume that I guessed the answer that Tn, instead of it, see, what did we guess here? We guessed Tn is order of n log m. But let's assume I guessed it incorrectly. Okay, you need to see how mistakes happen, right? In substitution method. Let's assume I guessed it to be uh, order of n. Okay, let's assume I assume that C of n, here I'm assuming order of n log n and hence I proved everything. But instead of guessing it correctly, if I guessed it incorrectly, okay, remember this is an incorrect guess. What happens then? What does this imply? This implies T of n is less than or equal to Cn. Okay, now let's assume, let's assume that T of m, right, equals to order of m, which means it is less than or equal to C of m for all m less than n. Now we need to prove, what do we have to prove? What do we have to prove? We have to prove that T of n is less than or equal to C of n, assuming, assuming, this is important, assuming T of m is less than or equal to C of m for all m less than n. This is what, this is exactly what we need to prove. Now let's go step by step here. This is simple, right? This is what we ought to prove. Now let's go step by step. So what is T of n here? Let's write, let's use, see, this is what we need to prove. We need to prove that T of n is less than or equal to C of n, assuming that T of m is less than or equal to C of m for all m less than n. But let's look at the original formula, original recurrence relation that I need to use, right? It is 2T n by 2 plus n, right? We know, so now again, if I take, since this is true, if I take m is equal to n by 2, which is less than n, this whole thing holds true because I'm already assuming that as per mathematical induction, which means T of n by 2 equals to, sorry, is less than or equal to C n by 2, right? So let's let's put it here. So we, this will be less than or equal to 2 into C n by 2 plus n. So this is exactly equal to C n plus n. So what did we get here finally? We got T n less than or equal to C n plus n. This is what we got. What do we want to get? That's important. What do we want to get? We want to get T n less than or equal to C n. We don't want this, but we got this. Look at it. What do we want to prove? We want to prove T of n is less than or equal to C n. But by just following through the concepts of mathematical induction, I got this. And this is not same as this because there is a plus n here. There is a plus n here, right? This and this, the RHS here, this is not same as this. And hence, this induction doesn't follow through. So just by assuming that T of m is less than or equal to C of m for all m less than n, I'm not able to prove this. I need to prove the RHS exactly. I can't mess it up, right? Look at this. In the previous case, what did we prove? We proved exactly that T of n is less than or equal to C n log n. We proved it exactly. Right? And that worked out because there is a minus sign here in the previous case. In this case, I have a plus sign. Right? So here T of n is less than C n plus n, but not exactly C n. Right? And hence, this whole thing, because the RHS does not match exactly, the whole mathematical induction falls through. Right? Very often, people make this mistake that they say this is order of n, and hence T of n is order of n, but that is incorrect. Lot of times people make this incorrect, this thing. You have to prove this exactly. You cannot make assumptions again. You have to prove this exactly. The RHS should be exactly the same. Here the RHS has changed and hence the mathematical induction doesn't work through and hence your guess must be incorrect, right? So one of the very important things in substitution method is that it's very prone to mistakes. It is very prone to errors if you're not careful. It is very prone to errors if you are not careful, right? While it's a very simple thing because all of us learned mathematical induction as, as youngsters at, at high school. And it's very, very easy, very mathematically beautiful to prove. It is very easy to fall into pitfalls like this, right? Please ensure if you are using substitution method, just make sure that the RHS does not change. This has to be Cn. It cannot be Cn plus N. I cannot emphasize this enough. Lot of people I see make mistakes 
in substitution method very it's very very prone to these minor errors we just it's just a small decision error here right i have seen people prove this and say t of n is order of n it is not right so you have to be careful when you are using substitution method not to make this silly mistakes